Well, we've started a series in the book of Daniel. We've been in a few weeks now describing how God is in the room. And today, I want to look at God in you. Does anyone have the Lord inside them this morning? I thought, I thought you might. But how, often how God moves is that he's in the room because you are in the room. I'm going to say that again. God is in the room because you are in the room and God lives in you. So when you walk into a place, you bring the authority of God into that place. So we, we spoke last week about how, how the way we live welcomes the presence of God in, and that often looks like holiness. It's described in the Bible that way, but I want to pose to you this thought. The way you live is the message of salvation to the people around you. It's the message of salvation to the people around you, and the, the way that you live should be sharing the gospel. Many of you have fer- heard that thought, preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. It's a, it's a wonderful thought about the way we should live, how it should line up with what we say. But I want to go beyond that and say you must actually also preach the gospel. To just live it is not enough. In fact, the God inside of you wants you to tell people about it. That is what he wants. Romans 10, 14, and 15 says this, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and who bring glad tidings of good things. Church, your feet are beautiful. Hallelujah. Some people are like, I don't know, Pastor. I've seen, seen someone else's feet. Church, your feet and God's eyes are beautiful this morning. And if you didn't know, you were called to preach. Yeah. Called to preach the gospel. But God calls us to live in such a way that it allows us to preach the gospel. God is the one who calls, but it's up to us to go. It's up to us to go. And I want to look at the willingness of Daniel. This morning, we're still in the book of Daniel. Even in difficult situations, he lived and he shared God. Watch this. Willingness is the key to a Christian life. Willingness is the key to a Christian life. God does not force us to do things. He partners with and chooses to use us. He partners with us. He doesn't have to. He just wants to. He just wants to. Are you thankful that God wants to use you this morning? He wants to use you. Even in difficult to understand passages and things where God is turning people's hearts, he's moving them just further into a direction that they're already going, but it is always your choice to obey or not. 1 Samuel 15, 22, to obey is better than sacrifice. We always have that choice. When we look at Daniel... He's not known for his great exploits, his military victories, his, his even great writings. Because watch this, what he's known for and what we read about is his obedience. That's why we like to read his stories because of, of his obedience. Next week we'll, we'll be going over the, uh, the lion's den. How I many of you know that will take some obedience? That would take some obedience for me. But that's how God wants to use you and I. Obedience. And that is out of our love for him. It's not out of our wisdom, our abilities, your very good looks, but simply out of obedience. It reminds me of, of this. this. Last Wednesday, how many of you guys were here on Wednesday? It was, it was an awesome service. Pastor Randall spoke some fire. The, the worship was anointed. And as we were worshiping, I was down here at the front, and, uh, and many of you guys might not know this, but I don't actually care to be in front of people very often. <laughs> and it's funny because I'm always in front of people. And I was standing in the front, and God's like, you should get down on your knees. And my heart was like, yeah, I should do that. And then I, my mind went to, wouldn't it be nice if I was not in front of all these people? <laughs> I've had some great times of worship in my office in the back, and, and, and for, for me, like, that's, I love worshiping God kind of in my prayer closet, where, like, no one's watching, it doesn't matter how 
good or bad, I sing, if I'm dancing, shouting, singing, whatever. Uh, for those of us who look awkward when we dance, I like to be in a different room. <laughs> but God was, nonetheless, he said, Mitch, I want you to, to kneel down. And now all these other things were going through my mind. And then he says this. He says, I didn't choose you because of your leadership abilities. I chose you just because of your willingness and abandonment. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and so I knelt down and I began to worship. But what God is wanting from us is just willingness and abandonment. Willingness and abandonment. That's who God wants to use. It's not how smart we are, how good at public speaking, how charismatic or outgoing we are, your potential to be a great leader. All those things are good. They're not bad. And we should work at those things. But what God is really looking for is willingness and abandonment. Those two things should result in what we talked about last week, holiness. But it should also result in sharing the gospel. Because the closer we get to God the more we're going to act like God. That's, that's when you hang out with somebody, you begin to talk like them, you begin to, to do things like they do, and since God is not going to resemble you, no offense, <laughs> we're going to be more and more like him. And so the closer we get to God, the more we should be sharing about him to everyone around us. God is in you, so you should share him. I want to look at two people in our story this morning in the fifth chapter of Daniel. Two people this morning in the fifth chapter of Daniel. You have Daniel, and then you have his very opposite, King Belshazzar. Two very different men, and as we pull back this situation, we'll see two different responses, two different responses that we often have today in our own life. So let's read the fifth chapter of Daniel, verses 13 through 23. 13 through 23. Are you thankful for the word? Amen. Amen. Let's read. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now, the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. Whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his spirit was hardened in pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne. And they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beasts. And his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen. His body was wet with dew of heaven. Till he knew that the most high God rules in the kingdom of men. And appoints over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you. And you and your lords, your wives, your concubines, have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which you do not See or hear or know, and the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. 
Again, do you love the word? I want to look at the, the willingness of these two men this morning. Willingness. Now, Belshazzar was actually the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. It says father there, but it's meaning in a, in a lineage way. He was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, and he ruled alongside his father. Okay, so he was kind of in charge, not necessarily in charge. He was basically that spoiled rich kid who throws parties. Okay? You ever known that type of person? I, I knew a guy that uh, I think he wrecked more new cars than I have owned in my life. It's, it's one of those type of people. But in, in verse 13, the king asks, and he says, Are you that Daniel whom my father, the king, brought? And he, here he usurps his authority because authority is important to him. And, and when you see that, you see his heart. It's, it's not really willing to submit. So he's starting off in a, in a not great place already. And that's in, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5 through 7. It says to examine yourself. In Psalms 139, it, asks, uh, it says, examine me. It's asking of God, examine me, know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any bad thing in me. Lead me on the road to everlasting life. Watch this, church. Our willingness to be examined often shows the state of our own heart. Our willingness to be examined often shows the state of our own heart. Verse 13 then, finds Daniel in a place of humility. Because remember, we're, we're looking back and forth of the, what the king is doing, what Daniel is doing. The king is just filled with pride. Daniel is, is showing humility here. He says he is a captive, but the, the king is, is speaking there is, and is, is looking at him being a captive. And Daniel says, uh, it, it's this, da, uh, sorry, Daniel knew who he was in God. So the same verse, it's the same words, it's in a different perspective. Okay, so the king is looking, saying, you are a captive. And Daniel is there looking and saying, I know who I am in God. And that's important for us to realize. We, we have to look at the different perspective of the things going on around us. Because the world might want to, to show you that you are in a box or show you that you are worth nothing or put you down in some way. And you need to realize that that's not who you are in God. Daniel was a physical captive, but he was free in the Lord. Yeah. He was free. You've got to get the perspective of the God who was in the room. Because again, wherever you walk into a room, God is there. That means his authority is there above and beyond anyone else's authority. So you can have confidence that you are in Christ wherever you go. And that's what we see in Daniel here. Verse 14, the king has heard of Daniel. The spirit of God is in you. That's what he says. The Spirit of God is in you. You see, the king had time to see. He had time to change. He had time to humble himself. Church, the people around you see Jesus in you. Here's a question. What kind of Jesus are you giving them? What kind of Jesus are we giving the people around them? We have to realize that as well, that we have had plenty of time to change. I will say that of myself. We've had plenty of time to change. Let's not use or waste another minute or moment. Let's dig in and see what God wants to do with us. As church, you, you have a purpose in God. You have a purpose in God. Daniel is here because of his willingness to be used by God. The king is here because of his willingness to serve himself. We're always serving something in someone. Who are you serving this morning? You would think that because the king knew Daniel was different. It says that. The king knew it. The king saw that God was in him, that the king would have humbled himself. But to the king, it was just another God. Church, make sure we're not treating our God like he's just another God. He's not. He's the only God. He's the only God. And to do that, we have to examine our hearts. Examine our hearts. The world thinks that every way and any way will get to heaven. The church, I'm grateful we just know the way. We know the one way. But how often do we do that as well? 
We know what God has said and what he desires, but we don't always choose to do it. We don't always choose to do it. And Daniel stands as a great example. He's a source of light and understanding. Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. The world is looking for answers. The world is looking for answers. God is looking to use you. I'm going to say that again. The world is looking for answers. God is looking to use you. He's looking to use you. You are the answer that he is giving them. You are that answer. Verse 15, watch this. The king sent for all the astrologers, the wise men that he could find. The world is trying to figure it out, which means there's an open door. The world is trying to figure it out. And that's why you see all these false belief systems, from evolution to good works to karma. These are all false gods that fall short of the true glory of God. And we're we're seeing in this passage the gospel played out in the Old Testament story. Because you see in Daniel the call to preach. You see uh, the message to repent to the king. And you see the answer given by the Lord. So he called for all the wise men around him because watch this, the world wants to be deceived. I want you to think about that. The world wants to be deceived. Make sure you don't want to be deceived. They look for any other way than the true way. And, but again, church, thank God we found it. We found Jesus because he's knocking on our door. He's he's reaching out to us, and we respond to him out of obedience. But the God in you is the only revealer of mysteries. Okay, watch this. We can often look for good things or hard work to replace submitting to God. It's getting a little deep there. That's a, that's a little bit of hard truth. We can often re- replace good things and hard work for just submitting to God. We can be so willing to come under anything but God. In church, I'm saying that of myself because it's a lot easier sometimes to not do everything that God wants. But the God in you is the only revealer of mysteries. The God in you is, is the light that shines forth in the dark place. The God in you is the giver of wisdom. The other wise men could not give the answer because they don't have the answer. Church, you have the answer this morning. The wise men of this world can't give the answers that you and I have in our hearts. Now, the word called here, so the king called for all the magicians, all the the astrologers, everybody. It means actually screaming for. And a lot of people in this world are doing that. They are screaming for an answer. Which makes sense because I want you to think there's a literal hand that appears and starts writing on the wall. I think most of us would be scared this morning, right? (laughs) Most of us would be scared. Uh, A little bit of insight into what the the king uh, did here. I think the, uh, the scholars were very nice to him. It says, you know, his knees trembled and he was scared and different things. And that was true. But, uh, it also says his hips were loosed, and a better translation of that is he pooped his pants. He was scared. He was scared. And he starts screaming, get me all the wise people in our nation. Because he was scared. But the world is looking for the answers that we have, and they don't always accept the answers. But we're still called to speak, still called to preach. Verse 16, we see that Belshazzar, what he, we see what he values most because he offers it to Daniel. It says, we'll clothe you with, with purple. Okay, at the time that was status. That was probably like the royal color. So it was a status symbol. We'll put gold around your neck. It's the, the appearance of finances and money. We'll make you the, the third ruler in the kingdom. That's all the power you could possibly have. The world always offers these three things, status, money, and power. And it's one of those three things that we usually worship instead of God. 
status, money, or power. The king was sacrificing to the gods of gold, silver, wood, iron, bronze, stone. If you think about it, those are the status symbols of our world because those are the things that we build on. The church, that's what the world builds on. That's not what we build on. We build on our God. And you see, that's why Daniel refuses those gifts. In verse 17, it says, Let your gifts be toward yourself and your rewards for another. Think of the heart of Daniel, because I want you to watch this. To accept those things would have been to accept their value as if the king could buy the answer. As if the king could buy the answer. And that's what the world wants to do. If I make enough money, if I do enough good things, then I'll get to heaven. I'll help people. But we see in in Acts 8 when Simon, the magician, tried to buy the power of God. It doesn't work. We cannot buy what is freely given. That power lives in you if you know Christ. It lives in you, and you are meant to walk in that power, but in such a way that it ministers to people and gives you opportunities to preach the gospel. You've heard pastors say it before, that word in the New Testament for being filled with the Spirit is to keep being filled. So we need to keep being filled that we can preach the gospel. Verse 18 through 21 recounts the previous chapter. It's the account of the king's grandfather. Okay, So this is King Nebuchadnezzar, who because of his unwillingness to acknowledge God, God had to humble. So King Nebuchadnezzar became prideful. But church, I want you to think about this. Thank God for a Lord that will humble us. Because we deserve death. And he chooses yet to humble us. So those moments that uh, you are enjoying some humility, thank God for it. Well, I'll share with you, yesterday I was on the men's four-wheeler ride. And there was a, an embankment that I thought I could drive up. Look really cool. And I can tell you now that the waters of Alaska are refreshing. <laughs> I also lost my phone. So if you need to get a hold of me, it'll, it'll be a day or two so I can remedy that. But uh, I recognized real quick that I was not all that. <laughs> As I walked back to get Pastor Daniel to help me to flip my four-wheeler back over <laughs> We had a lot of fun. If you missed it, uh, the, the men's group is going to do some other things that you don't want to miss because it's, it's a ton of fun. Today, uh, quick plug, the ladies are going four-wheeling. Yeah, not too dangerous, but uh, there's, there's some, some ladies that enjoy some fun as well in that sense. But to jump back in, chapter 4, verse 37, after God had caused him, this is Nebuchadnezzar, to lose his mind. And truly be humbled from a king to a homeless person that ate grass in the field. After all that, he says this, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all of whose works are truth and his ways justice, and those who walk in pride he is able to put down. That's a grateful heart. Thank God that you humbled me. Belshazzar, his grandson, should have remembered his grandfather. But church, unless we allow God to break off the things that we're in bondage to, they will be passed down to our children. We must be filled with the Spirit of God, allowing God to shape us. So the only thing that we pass down is a history rooted in Christ. Daniel was willing to do and say whatever God wanted. He was filled with the spirit of the living God, and that's what we're meant for today as well. He was not only willing, though. He abandoned himself to do so. He abandoned himself. And that can be a scary thing. It can be a scary thing. Have you ever been scared of what God is calling you to do? All day over here. You know, 
God calls us often to big things. And some people don't struggle with big things. Some people struggle with big things. But God also, if we're listening, calls us to a lot of little things. Go and talk to this person. Go and preach the gospel over here. Things that no one else will ever know if we say yes or no. But God is calling us to abandon ourselves to obedience. Church, are you worried about what might happen if you truly let God be in control? <laughs> that, was a, that was a loud yes. There's some honest folks in the room. But church, what are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? We don't know why Daniel wasn't with the wise men here. Okay? We don't know why he wasn't already there. He was probably 80 or 81 years old, scholars believe. So maybe he retired. <laughs> we don't know. Maybe he had been forgotten by the, the, the new king. But either way, church, watch this. The Lord will get you to where you need to be. The Lord will get you to where you need to be. You don't have to worry so much. You don't have to strive so hard. If you're doing what God wants you to do, then he's going to make sure you're in the right place at the right time for the right thing. And you can count on that. So whether it's a job, a person, or a stage, he will make sure you're there. Now the king's mother, King Belshazzar's mother, remembered Daniel. And had him brought in. She was probably the, the daughter of King Nebuchadnezzar. That's how the, the family lineage worked in this case. So she would have remembered what happened to her father who lost his mind and was humbled. And thank God for the moms that intervene. Amen. But watch this church. This mom should have known and taught her son. It's not enough for you to know about God or even if you know God if your kids don't know him. They have to also have a relationship with Jesus. Your relationship alone is not good enough. And that goes for your friends. That goes for other family members. Your relationship is your relationship. But in abandonment, you could lose everything. Everything. I want to ask you, are you ready to lose everything? Are you ready to lose everything? Daniel here calls out the king. Verse 22 through 24, we're going to read that real quick. Chapter 5 says, But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this, and you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them. You have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which you do not hear or see or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written. It says, Mine, mine, tekel ufarsin. Nebuchadnezzar had abandoned all reason. And his grandson was doing the same because pride always leads to destruction. We read that in Proverbs 16, verse 18. But his grandson, Belshazzar, even taking the things, the vessels that were from the temple of God and using them at a party, Acts 10 says, do not call common what is holy. And this wasn't just a, a random act. These vessels had probably been in storage for about 47 years at this point. 47 years. He had purposed in his heart to raise himself up over the gods that his nation defeated. And he didn't realize that it's God who allows things to happen. It's God who had humbled Israel at the time, and now the king in his own pride would have to be humbled. But Daniel recognized God. It says in verse 23, the one who holds our breath, who owns our ways. Daniel knew God because Daniel spent time with God. God's spirit was upon him because 
of the humility he displayed. Church, if you want to be used by the Lord, become humble. Become humble. That's a hard thing. But watch this. Satan is a good example of this. You can be around God's presence and still have pride in your heart. You can be around God's presence and still have pride in your heart. And really, that's what we're looking at. That's what is at odds with these two men, pride and humility. One walked in a way that served himself, and one walked in a way that served God. And that is, that is our choice this morning. Now, I recognize in myself a desire to not listen to God. Does anyone ever feel that way? Sometimes that would be way easier to not listen. Sometimes I don't want to get on my knees or do whatever else. Sometimes I don't want to share the gospel because I'm tired or, or maybe I'm busy or whatever it is. But God calls us to what he calls us to. And I think Paul understood that well in Romans chapter 7 verse 21 through 25 where it says, I find then a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God. But this is the dichotomy within us that we can relate to both of these men. Because like I said before, sometimes we want to just go all out. We want to do whatever God wants us to. And then sometimes we honestly just don't. We honestly just don't. Like the king, we can live in our pride. Setting aside the things that that are supposed to be holy and calling them common. What does that look like today? That could be... Several things. That could be the gifts that you have, the talents that you have, the, the finances you have. Whatever is supposed to go to God, if we set these aside and use them in another way, we're taking what is supposed to be holy and giving to God and calling it common. Church, what maybe in you is supposed to be given to God? We're like Daniel. We can come with humility. Humility knowing that anything we have been given is just by the grace of God. He appoints times. He appoints seasons. He appoints leaders. He appoints nations. So we come to this point of willingness and abandonment where they culminate into the writing on the wall. And that's a phrase often used today. And it means... You have been numbered. You have been tested. You have been weighed. You have been found wanting. Your days are numbered. It means deficient or poor quality in church. That is where you and I are without Jesus. We are not enough. I am not enough without Jesus. But for Daniel... It didn't affect him because Daniel was secure in where God had him. He was secure in who he was in God. What a lesson that is for us this morning. It doesn't matter what's going on. You can be secure in the Lord. Even that very night in our story, there was a coup that happened. And the king was killed. The king didn't listen to the message And not everyone responds. But watch this. The next king who took the place of that king immediately placed Daniel into leadership and befriended him. You never know who else is watching and listening. You can't always see how far your faithfulness goes. You can't always see how far your faithfulness goes. For the Christian, we know we are lacking. And that's why we have Christ. And to put it in in this story, Jesus paid it and tipped the scale. He tipped the scale to where in him we are no longer deficient. We're no longer lacking. 
Jesus tipped the scale. And like King David asks of the Lord, teach me to number my days, to use them wisely. We're not worried. We're not scared of the future. We're secure in knowing God. But church, oh, that we would remember to number our days. What does that mean? To realize, not in a, in a bad way or in a negative way, but to realize you have a set amount of days. You are destined to one day meet with the Lord. And that's a good thing if you're a Christian. That's a rejoicing thing. But you have just a set amount of days. What are you going to do with those days? What are you going to do with your days? Watch this. Daniel knew that the honor of a king was short-lived, but the honor of God lasts forever. The honor of a king was short-lived, but the honor of God lasts forever. The writing on the wall is a point where we realize something's going to change. And it can be for some, your time is over. Maybe you, you haven't listened to God and like us all, your days are numbered. But for those of us who know Christ, the writing on the wall is a call to hold steady. Hold steady, trust in God's faithfulness by having your own. Let's say that again. Trust in God's faithfulness by just having your own. Trust in his faithfulness. His faithfulness makes your faithfulness possible. It's not hard for me to remain faithful when I know God has never stopped being faithful. He is faithful. And even more than that then, also be filled with the Spirit of God. God wants to use you, maybe to speak to kings, but maybe just to speak to your neighbor. And as the worship team comes, because it's getting hot in here, but I'm not going to complain because I like the sunshine. But as the worship team comes, I'm going to ask us all to, to stand across this place. We're not going to go much longer, but the first call this morning... If you want prayer, or if you just want to come and meet with Jesus, the first call is for those of you who might feel like your days are numbered in some sense. Maybe you're living in fear of something. You need to, to come to God who knows all things and says to you, do not fear. Or maybe you need to make a change in your life. Or you need to, to be right before the Lord. Or maybe you are a Christian this morning and you don't feel secure in who you are or secure in what's happening around you. It could be happening in the world. It could be happening in your personal life, whatever situation you're in. And you want the comfort of Christ, that comfort that Daniel was able to walk in, that he was so sure of what God was doing that he would go before a king who half the time killed the people that were before him. You want that time of surety this morning the comfort that comes with it, the comfort that brings God into the room because God is in you and when you go somewhere, you bring the Lord with you. And then finally, if you need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit this morning because you recognize that like Daniel, people see who you're meant to be and they see the Jesus inside you and that is gonna speak volumes to them. So if you want a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, or if you want to get right before the Lord, or if you want the comfort of knowing him more, then I'm going to ask you to come right now, and we would love to pray with you. And as of course, if you don't know this Jesus, who is the most amazing person you will ever meet, we would love to introduce you to him. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to connecting with you next time. And don't forget, you can support us by giving through the Church Center app or by going online at summitwc.com give.